Sup, bitches? This is Dom, and you're listening to the Games Only Podcast. When you want to hear about games and only games, look no further. This is the Games Only Podcast, your number one source for video game news, reviews, and opinions. With HP 1703, in death as in life, I shall honor my brothers. Dr. Kumar, the boss is here at last, boys. And myself, Fresh Victor. Games Only Podcast on iTunes and YouTube. Hello and welcome to the Games Only Podcast, episode 39. 39! I am your host this evening, HP1703, and I am about to show you my Herbie Hancock. Gross. Yep, to my east, a man for which the heat is on, it's Dr. Gumar. Yes, the heat is on. Whoa, whoa, oh. Whoa, whoa, oh. And to my south and west... A man who's just burning, doing the Neutron Dance. It is Sunflower 4000. A brand new Chevrolet! I was going to make a joke about Herbie's love bug. As you had a Herbie, and I would have a Herbie. But Doc had no Herbie. No, no Herbie. See, no Herbie all, for me. They're That's all from one. Beverly Hills Cop 1 soundtrack. Oh, I was just going with uh, Herbie, Herbie the Love Pick. <laughs> Ain't no banana, no tailpipe. Let's talk I about some games, shall banana, we? banana, no tailpipe. <laughs> um, uh, if you'll recall from last week, as seen last week on the Games Only Podcast, episode 38, we tabled the discussion for Diablo 3. And now here we are, having played Diablo 3. In fact, I played last night with our friend Doc and a few others. And somebody wasn't there. Who was Who there? could that have been? I was looking over my list of friends. I have this little book where I keep track of my friends it's, coming. It's more like one sheet of paper. But, uh... You don't know how detailed these notes are, but <laughs> I, for the block of time that me and Doc were playing, I have no record of HP's whereabouts. Why is that? I was hidden. I'm running from the Mafia. Running from the mafia. Also, okay. hey, maybe send me a, a text or something and say, "Hop on Diablo 3. Oh, well, I didn't even think of that. But okay, you've been playing the starter version, right? HP, correct. What do you think, man? I, it's fine. I, I, I was thinking about it today. There's, there is a real disconnect um, for me between myself and my character um and i was trying to figure out why 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 i don't care about my character why i don't care about the story and why i don't care about the universe i can give you an answer on why you don't care about the story because it's shitty well i no story but what character did you play i am the uh female witch doctor just like real life Zerker the Barbarian. Barbarian, yes. Uh okay. because out of our group of friends that was one of the classes that was missing. Okay. So first I first of all the, the disconnect between your characters because you're a pacifist and barbarians like to kill things. <laughs> Alright, I can just say that right now. Straight which out the which class in Diablo three is the pacifist class? Well there the monk, not. obviously. <laughs> right. He he doesn't hit people, he uses lightning through his fists. Fist so light- much better. Go fist lightning. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think I think part of it is uh, the lack of customization in in the actual character. It doesn't feel like this character is is mine. It feels like this is just a stock um, kind of trite genre character that, that is I exactly what it is though. You're you're totally right about that. I can't fault that one bit. Um they are empty little puppets <laughs> that you play. Yeah, and, and I think I think uh letting me change, you know small aesthetic things would have gone a long way to making me feel a little bit more connected to who I was playing as and the game in general. But it is totally serviceable. It's 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 a uh, time sink for sure. You can play for a couple hours and kind of not know that a couple hours has passed. Um, but yeah, it 
I don't know. I I'm around indifferent to the game. I I it's kind of fun, but I'm not super into it. You know, I kind of felt that way as well for quite some time. Okay. And then I started playing with my friends. And that's when the real stupidity begins. <laughs> Things get in a good way. This is true. In a good okay. way. Uh, you know, I started a witch doctor because I had been playing as a demon hunter on my own, and the game's been fine. I hadn't had any problems with it. Like you said, serviceable basically in every respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it could have, if it wanted to, it could have had a fantastic story. It could have had fantastic characters. But they, they basically focused only on the gameplay, and I can't really fault them for that in a way. Right. If you have to choose one or the other. But I picked the witch doctor. Since that is obviously exactly what I should be in real life. Because uh, I'm throwing jars of spiders at people, and God knows I wouldn't let them get near me. So that The Witch Doctor has been a lot of fun. I summon toads that blow up, which are really neat. A bunch of little frogs, little bullfrogs, shoot poison darts out of a blowgun, and like I said, throw jars of spiders. So I can't really lose when it comes to something like that. But I have... I, I can summon flaming bats, and I do a little dance. And of course... We call it the bat dance, and we giggle, we laugh. <laughs> it's the bat dance. Come out and do the bat dance, and then Locke, friend of the show, Locke Vincent, we've been playing with as well, and he's a wizard, as he is in real life, and he's uh, throwing galaxies and things past the screen, and you end up giggling, and it's just this infectious thing where you guys both act as silly as you can and do a lot of funny things with what the game gives you, and it. All the other problems kind of melt away because you're just having a fun experience with your friends. And, and the game's definitely changed being able to play with my friends. Um, and I highly recommend doing that. Even if you think you prefer things solo, you'd rather discover things on your own, don't bother. Your friends are the way to go. And uh, playing catch-up, it's just a, a completely different game playing single-player because it's just not fun. But when you're with your friends, things are blowing up everywhere, and you're like, yeah! Yeah! It's awesome and it's fun and it's just good, stupid fun. Okay, uh, Doc, uh, similar experience or? Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's good, stupid fun. Um, one of the things Blizzard does right, I guess, and then I can see this is where um, Sonny yeah, had his analog to um, Farmville last week was that they, every single level they reward you with one, at least one thing, normally like two or three things, like a new ability or a new little extra tick to that ability. Um, mm-hmm. So. It's really addictive just to level up to see what you get next. Um, even like if you have like I, I, I play as a monk, so I have one ability that is lightning fist. You know, I punch people with a lightning fist. But Boring. just um, unlocking a new rune, it's like I can now teleport to that person and hit people with a lightning fist. Or now I hit people with big purple orbs instead of a lightning fist or something like that. Um, it's just like every level, even if it's not a new ability, it's a new little extra something to uh, get you to check it out and to switch your abilities around. So uh, they always have something to keep you going. Nice. And on top of that, one other thing, um, HP, I know that you've complained about collectibles and how you like to search everywhere. This game rewards you for it, no matter what. So <laughs> you pretty much can't go wrong if you're exploring everything. Yeah, I uh, I certainly enjoy that part of it. I also enjoy um, kind of clearing out the map, if that makes any sense. Um, oh, yeah. That's yeah. very satisfying. There there are definitely things in this game that are very, very satisfying in, in terms of, you know, a gamer. Um, but in an odd sense, I am always aware that this is a game. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily ever feel a connection deeper than that. Um, but is that enough to kill the game for you, you think? It's No, no. Uh, but it's also not enough for me to pay sixty dollars for it. Oh, you know what I mean. L- uh, like I if this game was saying. forty or thirty, then I could, uh, I would buy it and and enjoy it. But for sixty, I want something a little deeper. Now I also do like the achievement system in the game. Um, so oh yeah. Because every time you get an achievement, they give you a little something um, to put on your banner. Uh, some a little like fringe or a new emblem or color palette or something like that. So and I also like it alerts they always everybody on your friend list. Yeah I, yeah, I like that. I like how they always just give you something for it. Um, it's not just an empty achievement. Some of them are, but not all of them. Most of them are not. What's an empty achievement? 
One that just gives you a point, and that's it. Mr. Dissension, give me an example. Um, Everything on the 360. That doesn't give you an Avatar award. (laughs) All right, fine. So I've been having tons of fun. HPM, I I wish you could have played with us, but you can't. (laughs) Okay. It it is very unfortunate because I think you'd have a blast. But that would also mean that you'd have to change a great deal of your usual routine and start playing PC games often. Sure. It would be tough. I know it's tough. It's tough sometimes. I, I, I make transitions, too. Sometimes I don't touch my consoles for a while. I just play on PC, and I'm all right. So I do like how you just rub that in HP's face. Like, I wish you could play with us, HP. Oh, wait a second. Well, you, can. you can't. Because na, 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 na. Oh, hey. I thought you also had the starter version, Sonny. Did you buy the actual full? Yeah, it was a, it was a gift for my birthday from Locke Vincent. Aww. Of LockVincent.com? That's right. And now digitalnoob.com as well as coopolis.com. He's dot com in everything, guys. He is not a common talent. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. But yeah, he gave it to me for my birthday. Well, he basically said, here's the starter code. Tell me if you like it. If you like it, I'll get it for you. And I was like, okay. And I kind of wanted to be like, no, because I feel like getting a $60 game is way too much. Shame on him for that. But I said... It's fun. <laughs> he said, all right. And on we nice. go. So now you are to uh, a place where I can't join you, or, or can no, I no. not? You can join us anywhere. It wouldn't do you much good, but I would like to explore every single one of the classes someday. Mm-hmm. And I am I have no problem with starting over again. Because a lot of you will replay the game often, the whole thing, as you play. Um, there are incredible tiers of weapons. Like uh, the loot is unbelievable in this game, and as the difficulty increases, as you go back to like Act One on a harder difficulty, it's exponentially better. And there's tons of reasons to replay everything. Nice. Yeah, yeah it, it so. definitely it it strikes me as that kind of game. Um. It, that's all, that's also been a lot of the criticism from people that give it somewhat negative scores in their reviews. They're like, well, you didn't beat it on like the hardest difficulty. How can you say that? And that sounds really weird to me. I don't understand that line of thinking. Why make it normal? But there's plenty of content waiting for you after you just beat the plain old game. If you want to just like try to make the most awesome dude ever. And there is something to be said about uh, trying out the different classes and playing through the game as a different character. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun because you get your own unique little items that you probably won't find in another game. and It's a lot of fun that can be had. Nice. So, uh, w- overall, we're giving a recommendation of Diablo. I, I would. There's, there's small problems with it. Uh, the DRM is a pain in the ass. You always have to be online if you want to play. Mm-hmm. Um, which means no, your single-player game will have lag in it, which is bullshit. Bullshit. Right. hate it. Um, but after, that's after those that first couple of days, I didn't have a problem, though. Well, I still get it every once in a while, and then all of a sudden I'm dead, which death carries a very small penalty, which is nice. I so. haven't died yet in the game. Well, whoopity yeah. dick. Lightning <laughs> fists. <laughs> uh, and I know they have to... They have to do something like that for the uh, auction house economy to work, um, because they yeah have the to... auction house still isn't working right. <laughs> right, but yeah. they they have to make sure that everyone is kind of on the servers all the time and not messing with it on their own um, to make that auction house work whenever yeah. it goes up. Um, so I can't I kind of can't fault them for that, um, but it is a pain in the butt. Uh, on the player side to have lag in a single player game hey that's the wonderful future the sad part of it is that enough people voted yeah we're okay with this so we're going to be seeing a lot more of that in the future yeah eh I could do without that like I'd like to stay connected but damn if I don't want to if I'm my internet was out yesterday oh I'll work on my idea no no you won't you will you will masturbate to your imagination and that's all you're allowed to do with no internet <laughs> damn speaking of we get personal in this which uh where can i go from here um uh the imagination of the world of the game of thrones 
Yay. They Yay. They all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, so you're playing a little little farther into Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about five chapters in now, I think, so... Is five, it getting thrown Five hours. Um, is it gamey? It, it's, the, it's the plus and the minus to this game is that it takes... It's really, really accurate to its source material. Um, the only problem is... HP, have you read the books? I have not. No, you don't read books anyway. You just watch Bill Murray movies. Um, Sonny, you you read the books, right? <laughs> uh, not all of them. So okay. Keep it but, spoiler light! But, but how how often were there sword fights in the books? Oh, all the time, really. Really? Yeah, there are lots or of them. Or was there much more talking? Well, it's a book. There's words all over the place. Oh, God, Sonny. All right. So the problem with this is that it takes a lot from the source material, which there's a lot of talking. Why did you go to him for help? Because he read, because he, he, he read it, and no. I assumed that he would no. actually be helpful nope. for you a You should have known that I nope. would just like, know better. <laughs> 39 episodes. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Uh, no, so it's there, too there are words in the book, and people do talk, but uh, I guess they're trying to give you the book experience. Okay, this is your part where you shut up now for two <laughs> seconds, all right? You're not helping at all. Give, give Thank me some, you. Give Thank me some you, good. All right, so... The game is in, too talky. In, 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 in the books, there's not a lot of action. It's more plotting and... You know, just deception and just a lot of oh, conversations and dialogue. Plotting or plotting? Plotting. Which one? With a T. Okay, plotting. Plotting. Not plotting, plotting. Forget about it, all right? Plotting. <laughs> Jesus. People make plots. Um, so, the Big Thing Only podcast. <laughs> so, the, this game is very talky. It's very talky and not a lot of action. Like, um, so okay. the 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 first um the first chapter was pretty good. I was on uh, the the uh, uh, a night's watchman on the wall, so he had to go out and kill some wildlings. And there's a bunch of wildlings, um, a lot of little skirmishes. But the second chapter it takes place as a red priest named Alistair, um, and he's gone back home to uh, for his father's funeral to uh, mm-hmm. take over his lands, but he's been estranged from the family for 15 years, so there's a problem with his lineage or whatever. Uh, but it's just a lot of talking and backstory and describing things. And if, you are, if you're into the whole world, it's great. If you're not, you're going to be bored out of your fucking mind. I'll tell you straight out. You will okay. be bored. Because the, the game does need to do a lot of backstory, um, for those who are new to the series, you never know. There could be some people new to the series. Um, so, like, like a me, f- yeah, just like you. So, like a four-minute conversation about um, Robert Baratheon's rebellion fifteen years ago, and as to the state of the the kingdom, uh, it's just a, a very, very long. Uh, even like I knew the backstory, so it was kind of long for me. Uh, for somebody new, I think it's it's well dialogued. Uh, you know, it's well written. But it's it's just a lot of talking uh, and not a lot of action. The nice thing is though, there's there's a lot of um, a lot of politics in there. So on that second chapter, uh, I was trying to stop riots in the in the city. Um, mm-hmm. People were rioting, so I had a lot of options. And for you know whatever I chose, you know there's a plus side to it. Like oh, my personal guard will like me better but the villagers will hate me more, and so that type of uh, hmm. exchange. Um, so that's in there, which is nice, because uh, there's a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of politics in the books themselves, so that's a nice part, but it's just it's not a lot of action for it. Um, and now, this, a, is, this is an Atlas joint, correct? It is an Atlas joint. Um, the okay. game was in development long, long before Atlas and HBO came along to pick it up. Okay. Um, the game actually started in development before the HBO show started. Uh, mm, so okay. they've been trying to go for it for a while. And uh, the story is actually canon to the Game of Thrones, the uh, Song of Ice and Fire series. Uh, okay. So that's always nice. But, uh, yeah, if you're not a huge fan, I would not recommend picking this game up. The battle system is great. It's interesting. Um, it's kind of slow, but tough and um, rewarding yeah. at the same time. You uh, said you had uh, some trouble with kind of the 
the weird like slow down select mechanic, but you were getting yeah. used to it. Ha- yeah, are you, could, you used to it now, or yeah, I got I got used to it because now okay. I know where all the little doodads are on the radio menu, so I can just go straight to it and like click it, and it, I'm not taken out of the actual action for that long. Sure, right. You got to know where your doodads are. You always need to know where your doodads are. <laughs> always, um, always be doodadding. <laughs> always be doodadding. So, um. Where is chapter five? Do you, do you have any sense how far into the game you are? Uh, it's, I'm not so sure actually. I, I, okay. I heard it's like could be like thirty hours of gameplay. So I guess I'm a, maybe a quarter to a third of the way through the game. Oh wow! Okay, it's it's, it's nice because it does follow the style of the book. Um, in the book, each chapter follows a different character. So right now I'm just flipping back and forth between the two main characters, and um, the the um, night watch. Uh, the member of the Night's Watch is three months behind um, where the Red Priest is. So uh, it's like I know his story is going on, and it's going to eventually catch up to where the Red Priest is today. But it's, it's flipping back and forth, and that's that's refreshing. That's going back and forth. I'm just waiting for them to meet up, and then I can tear shit up together. Uh, nice. Yeah. So uh, not for not for non fans of the series, but if you are a fan... I mean, if you can get through some well-written dialogue and a lot of it, um, it's not like crazy dialogue like Metal Gear Solid 4 and uh, that you know that much, just weird talk. Okay. Um, but if there, there's a, a lot of talking and not too much playing. Maybe later on in the game it'll still be more playing, but uh, it's it's like um, Dragon Age Origins, that type of style of game. And, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, so okay. it, it, it's still an RPG, but it, it really needs to lighten up on the dialogue a bit, which is a shame because it's, it's just depicting its source material, uh, mm. but it doesn't translate perfectly into a game. Alright. Well, uh, let's go from a game that's a lot of talking and not a lot of action to the complete polar opposite. Uh, Max Payne 3. Sonny, you, you picked this up over the weekend? I beg to differ. You don't. Max Payne 3 brings story and gameplay. <laughs> okay, great. All right, someone here doesn't believe me already. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Max Payne 3 is probably the best game I've played all year. I've been saying that all week, ever since I did pick it up on, I believe it was Friday, maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, I played the hell out of it, I beat the hell out of it, and I loved the hell out of it. Um, there is no more hell in Max Payne 3. It is, it it is hellless. Say. The hell's been removed because I beat it so so brutally. Um, uh-huh. This game, holy cow, like, the way that it pushes narrative forward is unbelievable. Um, the story on its surface, when you take it out of the game and you just talk about it, it's fairly pede- pedestrian. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's not remarkable in too many ways. But the thing is, the way that they present that story in the game, the way they keep you moving along, and the way they change things up for you as you play, um, it, wow, the pacing is just off the charts. I never felt bored in a level. I never felt like something was getting old, because they change things up so often. HP, how far did you get, man? Because I don't want to get into any real spoilers, but I um, mention a few things. I can't remember if it was the docks or if it was the um uh like in an office building. I can't remember okay, which was the office after. building was the last thing that you played most likely. Okay. Okay. But um dude, I loved I loved shooting stuff up in that office building. Really? That's weird to me cuz the office did not really grab me like the other stages did. It was good, don't get me wrong, but... I didn't. Oh, maybe I have a thing for shooting up offices that you don't have. <laughs> I'd like to live in them. Was it a yeah. bank lobby by any chance you were shooting <laughs> no. up? No. No. But, uh, wow, the game, especially for the first portion, which you have played, so you experienced how well it pushes you along, and my God, the soundtrack is unbelievable. You, know, you didn't mention anything about the soundtrack last time, but whoo, boy... I, I don't have a boner for soundtracks like some people. Oh, it fit just perfectly. <laughs> All the music fit. It, it was just incredible. And it's just this this uh, kind of combination of the, of the visuals and the story and what you're doing and what you're hearing. Um, man, Max Payne is cool. 
Max, Max is cool. That's the dude I want to grow up to be. <laughs> uh, no, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> they did do everything. They do a really good job of showing how the events that he's going through change Max throughout. Even that that first portion that I saw, um, that you can definitely tell he becomes more haggard. He gets he's Fair more work. likely to be like completely drunk. Uh, or, you know, just to get over all the stuff he's seen and all the dudes he's well, killed. Like What's what's really interesting is that the second half of the game, and this is a very minor spoiler, he decides to quit drinking altogether and to clear his mind and to stop basically being a drunk. Um, he's still popping pills, though. Can't really help that. That's kind of a gameplay mechanic. Mm-hmm. But, well, you, can, uh, you can stop getting shot. Well, that's true. But, yeah, he gives up alcohol, and it actually changes subtly parts of the game as far as what's going on. Cool. Um, it's uh, just absolutely unbelievable the way that they take you through all these different locales and things going on. The only problem is that the story itself and a lot of the plot twists and parts of that, and this is really the only gripe I have with the game, uh, a lot of these very important things that are just barely subtly alluded to in the beginning third of the game. I've split it up mentally into three acts, I think. Um, they come around near the end, and everything starts to fit and come together, but the thing was, I forgot about the initial mention of a lot of things, and it ended up seeing other people mentioning it in a story thread that I was reading. Because I'm a weird kind of guy. When I beat a game, I like to go back and see what everybody else said about it, so that I can appreciate it more, or maybe deride it if it deserves it, because there are things that I miss. I mean, let's just be honest. Right. But, you know, very throwaway phrases and moments where you see people and you don't think much of them and they end up being pretty important later on. Um, it would be much better suited to a two-hour movie instead of a eight- or ten-hour game. Mm. It's really hard for games to keep that kind of uh, subtle, you know, oh, people are vanishing from the favelas in Brazil. Uh, yeah, they are, okay. And then that ends up being a pretty important story point later on in the game. But you mm. just barely hear it in passing in a helicopter ride. So that's the, really the only complaint I have about the story. Um, I went back to the previous Max Payne games and played a little bit just to remind myself of how what Max really is like. And it's very, very different because it doesn't use comic book panels like it did in the previous games. And Max doesn't use a ton of metaphors like he used to. I think... L.A. Noir being around may have <laughs> contributed to them slowing down with that. But yeah. Max does not use a ton of metaphors. He's a lot more easy to relate to and kind of get a feel for what he's like without this flowery language that would be very out of place in a modern day... Ooh, I liked the, the flowery language. was part, One of the things I liked most about Max Payne. Okay, so did you notice its absence, really, in this yes. game? Yes, okay. yeah. But, I, I mean, it, there's still that noir style. It's just kind of a more matter-of-fact, like, practical noir yeah, it's monologue. Less, it's less like he's brooding about everything and more like he's stating what's happening, if yeah. that makes sense. You do get lots of voiceover from him during the whole game. And one thing that is cool is you do go back to Jersey a few times and play through flashbacks, which are really fantastic. Holy cow. Yeah, uh, I I think I played through the first... Oh, you, you went through the uh, the bar? Yes. Yeah, was that not an amazing surprise? I that was very it. cool. But, yeah, they, they've changed up some things, but somehow it fits with the character, and given the amount of time that's passed and how, old, how much older he is now, it's a lot more forgiving, and it seems to fit that, you know, he's not going to spend his time, you know, pining away after a woman to the point where he did in the previous games, and now it's more business, more I'm tired, more... It's just a perfect characterization. Uh, yeah. I can't say enough good about this game. The gameplay itself um, stayed very fresh for me through the whole thing. Saw those collectibles HP mentioned, and in fact, I think the collectibles should even be in the game, uh, to be honest with you. If you luck out and then just get a golden gun, I question why that's in this game. <laughs> if you're playing through it like that. So it yeah. feels a little a little strange and I didn't see very many of them either. They were not Yeah, easy. so you weren't looking for them. I, I think that I think that helps the pace 
to not well, I look looked, for I him. I looked for him until I failed a mission. <laughs> and what was really funny is that oh. he has conditional lines as well. I was looking around for something in one of the levels, and he talks to himself every once in a while, and he said, whatever I was looking for, it wasn't here. And I felt like an idiot for going after it. And I was like, oh, I guess I better quit looking. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I, I liked how that was kind of tongue-in-cheek, but it didn't strike you as they were breaking the fourth wall, which was the really important part. They weren't calling you out, even though they were. It just, it it fit, and it was really cool, but the gunplay is super satisfying. Like you mentioned, you get that slow motion on the last kill, and you can riddle people with bullets if you want. And boy, was I guilty of doing that. It looked really good when you've got somebody falling backwards in slow motion, and you're basically punching holes in their chest like buttons on a button-up shirt and you're like oh oh i wonder how long i can keep going <laughs> if that if that shirt was filled with blood balloons exactly and yeah it, it's just uh i don't want to use the v word so i'm not going to but it what, puts what a lot v of what v word what were you going to say i'm not going to say General. it visceral no i'd never say that word oh, vortex. Okay. vortex it was like a vortex of blood Vanguard. But it was uh, it, it was really felt really good, very um, not necessarily liberating. But Max just goes through these insane situations after situations, and it's kind of comical how many men he manages to murder. It really is because you're looking at a death count of probably a couple thousand people by the time you finish the game. Right, and one of my favorite like I I love I love that uh, that whole office sequence because you're escorting. You're escorting this dude who's like a computer guy who is freaking out, and Max kills like two dozen dudes in one room, and then comes over to the guy and is like, "You're doing great. <laughs> Come on." And, and yeah, he, sh- he shows an unusual amount of compassion for people that have no business being where they are. Yeah, um, and I think that's that's kind of fair. I would, I definitely like that more than the whole, "Oh, of course he's gonna die," you know, and he gets cut down in a crossfire. No, instead he's very encouraging, and he's trying to do his job. Yeah. So, did you play any of the multiplayer? I did. The multiplayer is kind of throwaway, kind of stupid fun. Okay. It's nothing truly competitive. Uh, it's kind of goofy. There is a mode called Painkiller, which is very neat, but it functions as Halo's Juggernaut mode. Mm-hmm. There are two people. You can be Max Payne or his, in the game, sidekick, Passos. And if you are one of those people, you get bullet time and you get to dual wield weapons. Everybody else is a peon and a scrub that doesn't have that, but they're out to kill you. So mm-hmm. you do have considerable advantages over them, but as soon as they kill you, they turn into Max Payne. Okay. So that's that's a really fun mode, and I do enjoy that. I was really glad that the game did not have an online pass. That was very important. So very happy for that. But I certainly am not going to throw down the $30 for the Rockstar Pass to get a bunch of multiplayer maps. That's just not for me. Right. So, so in in the end, the multiplayer is serviceable, and it can be fun with friends, but it is not a selling point. Um, I'm going to purchase this game as soon as I send it back to Gamefly, because I loved it, and I really feel that they need the sale. I mean, I don't... They're hurting, and they need my money. I feel that this game deserves to be bought at full price. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's fair. Oh, what a game, though, man. Are, are you... Are you going to go back to it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, good. Because, whew, what uh, an amazing thrill ride. Man, it was a thrill ride. It changed me. I loved it. And like I was saying, I think I think it is possible to play this game wrong, and I think I was playing it wrong. Oh, um, you think so? Yeah, I, I think you don't go for the collectibles. You just keep up with the pace of the game, and I think it would be a lot more enjoyable. So I look forward to playing it uh, kind of a different way when I get my hands back on it. And I did notice that a lot of people, um, I was looking at some stats online, and Rockstar Social Club, if you've not signed up for those, I definitely recommend it, because it keeps track of a lot of interesting statistics. And a lot of people that beat the game have wildly different things, uh, depending on how many kills they got during shoot dodge and during bullet time. (laughs) Some people barely use shoot dodge, and some people barely use the bullet time. And... It's interesting to me that people go through the whole game not really changing that up. And near the end of the game, I forced myself to use more bullet time. And uh, that's a pretty good mechanic. I should have used it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not not necessarily the shoot dodge, though. I didn't find that all that useful because you are exposed. Yeah, the thing is, the shoot dodge is 
pretty much unlimited, at least at the lower skill levels. I don't know how the really hard ones are, mm. but if you take cover, I mean, you can literally jump back and forth, and you will take shots. It will happen, but you it's for people who are more accuracy impaired, like myself, and you can take ah. your time, you can shoot. But they have incredible bullet time sections that are part of the game, like, uh, you yes. know, getting your foot on a you know, crane and flying upwards and you get this chance to kill like eight people in one second and it's mm-hmm. just it's amazing when you do pull it off and it feels so good. Yeah, what when, a hell of a game. When you pull it off, when you don't pull it off and have to do it again, it feels <laughs> less good. Um, I, I can but, definitely understand that. Uh, <laughs> there, there was one time where I was shooting a boat full of uh, enemies uh, trying not to hit a particular hostage female, and I ended up hitting her, uh, and that Ooh. that ends the game. Um, yeah. So I do not recommend shooting the hostage. Yeah, and again, if you do rent this from Redbox, you only get the first. I would I would say just barely more than a third of the game because it kicks you. I mean, you're close. You were very close to the end of that first disc HP, if not right there. Mm. I seem to remember it being right after the office or a little bit after that. So okay. you were very close. But uh, what a hell of a game. Everyone should be playing this. They should give it a try. They should go through the story mode at least once. There are score attack modes. Uh, there are procedural, or not really procedural, but, the, uh, you know, experience levels, and you get rewards for doing things like, I've shot 250 people in the crotch. Yay, give me my experience. <laughs> Stuff like that. And um, it, it's good that you can earn a lot of the stuff in the story mode. Um, one thing that is kind of a shame, there is no real cooperative mode, which... If they threw in multiplayer, you would have thought they would have thrown in co-op, like a very, very robust co-op experience, but they do not have that. But uh, I can see how that could also be a problem, because the game's kind of geared towards moving forward and always doing something new, and being stuck in one spot, that might make it lose its luster. Yeah. Um, A game that does have a cooperative experience that came out this year, uh, I finally got my hands on The Darkness 2. Yay! One of my other almost favorite games. One of Sonny's <laughs> almost favorite games. Now, do you have a favorite game? Or are they all? Almost I don't know. Favorite? Everything's in question. I mean, I was just kind of defaulting to Mass Effect Three because of all it did, but uh, I'm really questioning that. I really am. Let's not spoil our end of the year uh, show. We won't just yet. Um, we only have six months to go. We only have six months to go. Maybe we should do a half of the year. Wrap up kind of show. The first half. Yeah. Anyway, the one uh, week so we're the... not playing anything. We'll do it. Okay. The Darkness Two. I haven't spent a lot of time with the single player, but I have played through the cooperative campaigns now twice. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so the co-op campaigns are separate but kind of related to the single player experience. You're, yeah, they're like uh, side stories. Yeah. Um. And you can play uh, up to four people, and each each of these uh, different people kind of has a darkness weapon, um, not not necessarily a, a darkness power, but but a a weapon that is kind of special in some way. Um, and they they all, all have a link to the darkness that goes through their weapons. Yes, um, and they're all uh, aligned via racial stereotype, which is fantastic. Um, the uh, the Asian dude having a samurai sword, um, and the Scotsman having an axe. Um, but I really, really like how each of these characters and their abilities are different, and uh, it it adds to the replayability of this uh, co-op campaign um, quite a quite a bit. Uh, the first. The first time I played through it, I played through as the female character who has a uh, like a darkness shotgun, um, and then the second time I played through the as the Scottish dude with the axe. Um, and the abilities, like like in the single player, you can upgrade these kind of different darkness abilities, and um, they're all really satisfying, and it's very cool to pull off these powers and. Um, I found the co-op campaign to be fairly satisfying, though short. Oh, yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Did you play it with others or alone like uh, I did? Uh, no, I played it with a friend of the show, Draco Master. Um, we played through 
uh, twice, uh, one on kind of one difficulty, and then we ramped up the difficulty the second time through. Um, and, and you guys had more powers then, so it was more fun. Well, we went through as different uh, characters the second time, but do you do you keep those upgrades? Yes, sir. You okay. certainly do. Fantastic. So yeah, I, I mean, I could definitely see myself if I if I purchase this game and if I have friends to play with, uh, I will go through that co-op campaign at least twice more um, to play as each one of the different four characters, and then I'll probably play through again to uh, get one or two characters leveled all the way up just to see how sweet it gets. Cause uh, did you play the single-player campaign at all? Uh, I have... I ha- I haven't even reached the end of the demo portion, which I played through the demo um, before the game came out, and I haven't even gotten that far in the single player game. Um, Interesting. Okay. So I can't really speak to the single player yet, uh, but I have it from GameFly, so I can take my time. And we have Memorial Day weekend. If you're up in the states, have a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. But yeah, I'm gonna play through this probably hammer it out in an afternoon and um yeah it's it's definitely worth doing i can say that with no doubt whatsoever i think you'll have a great time and i think you'll be interested in reading the comic books afterwards which i cannot recommend doing because they're not very good (laughs) (laughs) because i really wanted to read them and then i started and i was like this is like horrible this is not nearly as good as the games like not even close so yeah the 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 gameplay, like I said, is so satisfying. I, I really enjoy um, all of those cool darkness powers. Um, and, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to playing through this. I did not play the first darkness, so... Um, you will be lost in a couple small spots. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that there will be a couple things that I'm just not going to understand, but... Uh, I can give it to you straight real quick. Um, the darkness basically murdered your girlfriend. Okay. I, I gleaned That's that much. It. That's about it. Oh, okay. You still miss her. <laughs> and that too. Aww. Right. She's... Yep. What? She, is she your style? And she up your alley? Lady. Yeah. She'll Huge watch a full movie there. with me or whatever. What? what to kill what, a mockingbird. What? It was to kill a mockingbird? <laughs> She's got a thing for Atticus Finch. Right? Who doesn't? That Atticus. Mm-mm. Um, what was I saying? Okay, yeah, so that's that's the Darkness 2 co-op uh, experience. Uh, I may talk about it next week when I've gone through the single-player campaign. But I hope so. I hope you find some time to play through it, because, uh, like I said, it is very good. And Doc, did you ever play any of it? Do you have plans? No, I did buy it on that Amazon sale, and it's sitting on my computer, and uh, All right. I'll, I'll play it eventually. We can do co-op. I, I've got it. I've got it on PC. I wanted excuses to play it again. And it does have New Game Plus also, if you so desire to get even stronger and crazier HP. Yeah, I, I generally... New Game Plus is generally the only way to get me to replay a game. Uh, and I, I kind of like that. I like going into a game uh, leveled up. I'll tell you one thing I am replaying. I'm replaying Max Payne 3... Saturday, because a friend of mine who really liked the other Max Paynes was like, oh, it's out? And I was like, yeah, you should come over. We'll play through it. So, oh, nice. Get a pizza, wait. some Coca-Cola. Oh, shit. I don't Sit know, on I don't the know. couch. A weekend, Sit dog. on the couch and nosh. Oh, that sounds yes. good. The way it's probably going to unfold is he will show up at my apartment, we will go out to eat, we'll come back home, play for an hour, and we're like, man, I'm really sleepy. And that'll be that. And then <laughs> things will happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not my style. Too hairy. Yeah, you Speaking like him shaved. Hair. Yeah. Uh, uh, hmm. hey, this transition don't, don't, to don't Dragon's Dogma is hairy. <laughs> Speaking of dogma. <laughs> Did you hear that bark? Dogma. Dogma. Um, so, Doc, you've been playing a little bit of Dragon's Dogma. Now, this is kind of... Capcom's foray into action RPG, am I you know, correct? I, I, they, they did make the Monster Hunter series, correct, Sonny? 
Uh, sort of. They published it. <laughs> okay, they published it. Okay, because I I had never played it, but for some reason this looks like a Monster Hunter game. It kind of feels like it, and I, and I never played it, so there's well, a similarity like, between uh, them. You do enjoy hunting monsters. Yeah, you know things that go bump in the night. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I made my character on the demo. The demo has the full character creator, um, so I made him on the demo, and I was able to use that character from the demo in the retail version of the game, which makes me extremely happy. Um, nice. I didn't have to go and take the time and pick everything the way I liked it before. Um, I made some grizzled old fat dudes so like Sonny in 30 years, after, after he's done bodybuilding. He's just going to be old, big bushy beard. Wow. Uh, yeah, I so. already have a really long goatee. Yeah, well, <laughs> white Bushy beard. Uh, I like making. I, get anti- white hair. I, I like making antiheroes for these type of games, just because they look you so. Assume awkward. I am an antihero. That's yes. the great assumption. Yes, that's that's a perfect that's assumption. I don't even need to assume that. I know that. That's a <laughs> fact. <laughs> no assumption uh-huh. necessary. Uh, so it, it's it, it's. During like the cutscenes where your character's in it, he's like twice as wide as most of the other character models, and he's just really old. Uh, so okay. it looks extremely funny to see him That's in uh, some oh. circumstances. So I'm I'm very happy uh, with my created character. But the game starts off um, with a little bit of a I don't know if it's like a like before anything happens or after anything happens, but, you know, not with your main character, with an, with another character trying to show you the ropes of uh, fighting. It's a really, so far it's pretty basic action RPG, but I can see it getting into a lot of depth um, because you have uh, two attacks, you have a light attack and a hard attack, and then you have skills associated... A heart attack! <laughs> it sounded like you said a heart attack. <laughs> That's funny to me because of the whole plotted thing earlier. Heart attack. It it did kind of sound like you said heart attack. You can have a heart attack. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, All right. Done. I'm done. May I go on? <laughs> <laughs> so you have a hard attack. Oh. Oh. Now, I, do, I, do I have to use my theater tongue? So you have a hard attack and a light attack. Light? Please do. <laughs> Please continue using that voice. <laughs> okay, so you have a light... We're talking controls here. You got attacks. Okay, so you hit the button and things happen. Uh, no, uh, and each... each um, whatever you have, if you have like a, a shield and a sword, there's skills associated with that that you can set uh, when you level up. So, so far, I don't really have any skills, so it's kind of basic. I can kind of... Char- Did they use your shield? I can kind of charge at things. Well, I can block, and then there's different abilities. Like, I might be able to, like, jab somebody in the nose with my shield. I can- yeah, I was saying, shield bash. Shield, shield jab. Um, and then, then there's just a bunch of other things that you wouldn't think made much sense in an RPG, um, but they're a hell of a lot of fun to do. Like, you have a grab button. Um, so I can, if there's a big monster, like, I can grab onto its side and, like, stab it in the ribs, or, like... It's cool that it's not like, like, you have to grab them from a certain angle while they're not in an animation, because that sucks. I could just (laughs) jump and then grab onto whatever part's closest, and then climb up on it, so it it feels like, um, Shadow of the Colossus a little bit, because I I had one boss fight with a, a Cyclops, and I just, like, climbed up from the bottom and just started jabbing it in its head. Um, True but, monster fights. I so, love them. So you have that grab button, but that also works on NPCs. And I saw, like, the you know the grab button's always there. Like, there's a little thing in the corner that shows your button layout, um, and, like, grab is always present. So I walked up behind an NPC, and I hit grab, and I got him in a full Nelson, and they were just kind of dangling there. <laughs> so I like stuff like that, which the button still works if you're not in a fight, and it works in comical ways. Um, you can pretty much pick anything up that you would think you could pick up. So I was, like, chucking urns of oil at people just because I could. Uh, oh, and then could you light them on fire? Or I, I, I don't have anything to light them on fire. Oh. They got really slick. Yeah, they just got really <laughs> shiny. Uh, All right. But, you know, just stupid stuff like that. Um, the, the mechanics work is you can you roll with a party. Um, this feels like it should be a multiplayer game. But it's it's only single player. But you have these pawns, I believe they call them, um, pretty mm-hmm. much man servants, um, in, in which you go ahead and you summon them at a at a stone, and they roll with you. And 
that's where the little bit of co-op comes in. It's not quite um, co-op, I should say, but you can summon other real players' pawns. Like, everybody creates one pawn, um, and ah. then people can summon that to their game. Um, and then when you rest at, at the end of the night, um, your pawn will come back with an item for you, or, or a few items, depending on how well they, how well they did in somebody else's game. Um, awesome. So a little bit of multiplayer like that, but it's not, you know, real. You're not really going to be playing with somebody else. Um, but a friend of the show, Maxim, grabbed my pawn. My pawn's name was Diddle Buster. Um, so, yeah, I just made some f- funny names because they had a whole list of names to choose from, and I, I said Diddle and Buster. Boom, done. Uh, so, he grabbed him. That's, that's true to life yeah. experience that you made yeah. yourself. The Diddle Buster. The Diddle Buster. And my main character is named Leslie Cotton, um, the grizzled old man known as Leslie Cotton. Uh, so, I mean, so far it's it's fun. I'm just kind of going through the mechanics. Uh, basic RPG, buy items, equip them, hit things with your sword. But the, that little piece that you can climb on other enemies, uh, that's just fun. And it feels like each part, like the big Cyclops I was fighting, it felt like each part of him had its own little mini life bar. Um, so if I kept attacking one of the legs, he would fall over. If I oh, grabbed nice. onto one of his arms, it would kind of deaden for a little bit, and he would try and get me off with his other arm. Um, so just little interactions sure. like that make it feel really, really well done. Uh, the game is just fun to play so far. So I, I want to go back. I'll probably have tomorrow off, so I'll probably go and play a few hours of it tomorrow. But yeah, it's a blast so far. Um, Have you heard anything about how long the game's supposed to be? I do not know. I, I know at some point it's pretty much going to turn into an open world game. I hear. Um, so once I figure out, like right now, I've, a dragon stole my heart, so I'm chasing him down. That's the basic synopsis of the story. Um, <laughs> he stole your heart. He stole Aww. my like, like literally. He clawed the heart out of my chest, and they kicked the total me eclipse inside. of the heart. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. Um, so I I need to go get that from him, but I think it just opens up, and I'll just be doing little mini quests and roaming from village to village with my heartless character. Now, what exactly is the problem with not having a heart? Is it like being held ransom? Is it your soul? Is well, it... I'm, I'm not so sure, because I mean, if I didn't have a heart, I would be dead, I presume. Right? Is that uh, medical works? science says yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure what, what bad <laughs> things he has for not having a heart. Like, after he lost it, he kind of, like, grabs for his chest, like, wanting his heart back. And then a voice speaks to him and says, you must come after me and take it back or something like that. But he's just like, Why? I miss it so much. <laughs> That's so I'm shitty. so sad. So shitty of a dragon to do that. Yeah, fucking prick. <laughs> It just it that seems like such a really weird story they, turn they, to take. These aren't the dragons from that movie with Sean Connery? What the hell is that movie called? Dragonheart. Dragonheart. I am yeah. the last one. Yeah, these, he's, this, this is not the dragon from that. All right, he's not a friendly one. Uh, he kind of snarled at me and then blew me up with some fire. I don't know why he didn't just kill you. Yeah, I don't know why. That's an excellent question. So, 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 so the way it works is that I, you have. I, so magic, I, I picked up a sword. I, I was on a beach. I'm a fisherman, I guess. I don't know. How, there's not really much backstory as to who quite, was the guy. Quite the it's, warrior. <laughs> but there's a sword there, so I picked it up, and I went charging at him. He breathed fire at me, and I just laid there dying. And then he looked at his paw, and there was a sword in it. I guess simply because I stuck him with a sword that's like a toothpick to him, he decided to rip my heart out and... He life. might be like, uh, let's just mess with this human. Yeah, let's fuck with this guy. He wastes the rest of his life. He's a toothpick into my hand. Wow, that's that's pretty that's pretty bizarre. That's I'm pretty I'm intense. still passing on this game for a while. I'd like to rent it, but I'm I don't feel any real pressure to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not so sure if the story's there, but it's just really fun to play. Hmm. Um, which combat do you think is more fun, this or Kingdoms of Amalur? Um, I want to say this, because this wow. is just, like, your Chaos Avalar, you're, you're just stuck on the ground, you know, you can roll and dodge, but this is really three-dimensional, you know, you're climbing on enemies, you have to think about how you want to take them down. That, the, you, you're rolling with a party, so they'll, like, put flame on your sword, and then you have a, you know, you'll run around with a flaming sword like a maniac, um, diddle busters shooting arrows at people, it's fun. They will grease your club. Yeah, grease it up real good. You know what I mean. Grease Leslie Cotton's old man club, yes. 
Is there any similarity to Devil May Cry in the combat? Because it sounds like there might be, but... Uh, no, 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 no. It's not not nearly as fast-paced okay. as um, it's, it's a little bit more methodical. Devil May Cry, you're just kind of swinging like crazy. I'm trying to do big combos. This, um, a little bit slower pace. Mm. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, like I said, I think I'm going to pass on this and not purchase it. I'd like to rent it. and It's, it's definitely it worth a like rent. There's no online pass that I know of, so your your pawn can go anywhere you want. Uh, can you pick up, like, my demo pawn if I made one? Yeah, I'm, uh, Predator Show Maxim is, is playing with my oh, a demo pawn. Um, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, because I would reinstall it and give that a try. Maybe someone would like to have... Mr. Sunny Flowers come into their game. Yeah, Nightshade. <laughs> Who wouldn't like that? That was my name in MLB 12, the show, Sunny Flowers. <laughs> yes, because they had the names for the, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they'd be like, Flowers, up to bat. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. That's, um, that's Sunny with an O. Hey, Sunny. Like, oh, uh, right. Day afternoon. Okay. Forget I about can, it, Sunny I Flowers. hear the difference. Attica, Attica. Like uh, Johnny Tower. Sunny Flower. Yeah, just like Johnny Tower. So, you know earlier how I was talking about Diablo 3 stupid things happening? I forgot about how stupid it got. <laughs> Since I have demonic dogs, and I just spit out frogs. And you throwing burnt zombies around. <laughs> I'm dogging and frogging. That's how stupid things get. <laughs> that you're Dogs right. and That's, frogs. That is stupid. All right, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> dogs and frogs. Dogs you guys need to try to have. He's getting a tattoo tomorrow. He just wants to let it out. Dogs and frogs for life. <laughs> Locke gave me my first tiki mask, so I was pretty thrilled. Oh, that's sweet. That's what those kids are calling it nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and about Diablo 3 again, one of the nice things is that when loot drops, it's unique to your game, and nobody else can grab it. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about someone else picking up and all the gold. Someone else seeing a weapon and be like, oh, I guess I'll grab it. You don't have to do any of that. You grab it, and if it's for someone else, you, like if it's exclusive for them, you'd be like, hey, you want this? And you can just drop it, yeah. and they'll get it. But they don't get your loot, which is cool. Or you could be a prick and not tell anybody and just kind of salvage it. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it's not really a big deal yet. So. And that's, no. that's, that's server-side stuff. That's all thanks to... Their annoying DRM stuff. Yep. The worst thing in the world is responsible for this. Uh, but it does have gold auto pickup, which I believe Borderlands 2 is also doing. Thank God. Hmm. Where if you just walk over money, you will pick it up. Because, boy, nobody likes to hunt for $3 on the ground and press X. That, uh, yes. <laughs> nobody likes that. I am excited for Borderlands 2. That, uh, that could make a list of top ten things in games that needs to die. Oh, yes. Maybe it is already dying, though. Oh. Oh. Well, it needs it? to die. I'll finish it off. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, were you talking about Borderlands 2? Or did I you... was. I mean, I saw their crazy uh, loot box version. Are you going to go out on a limb and get the no. extra special one? You sure? No. You got a free copy, right? Oh. Because you waited in line at PAX? I did not. Oh, you did not. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Was I rubbing salt in the in the wound <laughs> in, in your soft membranes? Right. No, I. And Borderlands is a pretty okay game. I thought you really liked it. It's an okay game. Oh, I thought you loved the oh, shit out. Yeah, I, thought you I roll. Were I roll with people, people that... who love it to death. Oh, uh, oh okay. So okay you game. you enjoy it, but it's not uh, it's not Jesus. Uh, yeah, it is. No, it's not, not our close. Yeah, I think they loved it to death because that was their first real loot grind game. So, look at all these things I got. You know what we used to call it? Fisher Price Diablo. <laughs> and now HP has tried Diablo and he can see the Fisher Price parallel. Uh, yes. <laughs> Mattel is like Diablo is like the Mattel Diablo. <laughs> There's uh, so two blows up in this motherfucker. <laughs> Duplo uh, was always the third rate fat Legos. <laughs> Fuck those. Doing it with Duplo. Um, uh, so what do we have on tap for next week? Anyone have any plans in particular? I'm going to uh, play more Dragon's Dogma. Okay. I'm going to play more Max Payne 3. <laughs> uh, Has anything come out? Uh, I can check Gamefly if you'd like. I don't Just think it's almost a damn thing comes out. Uh, uh... Uh, now, Ghost in- Recon Future Soldier did come out. Oh, this that's week. right. 
I'd uh, like does anyone my, have any plans? I'd like to get my hands on it. I probably won't play it um, until later down the line. That and I believe a stupid game called Inversion. No, that's not next week. That's the week after. Okay. Oh yeah. Gosh, we've got a week of nothing actually. I believe. So, yeah. Wow. So I might uh, get my hands on uh, Ghost Recon if I can. We have Inversion and Madagascar Three, and then the week after that, there's Lollipop Chainsaw. Nah, not going to do that. You know, I heard nothing but good things of it. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, HP, there's a Connect demo for Steel Battalion Heavy Armor. I would like to know what you think of that. Yeah, I guess I'll give that a shot. Well, you have a Connect, man. I know. I <laughs> guess I'll give that a shot. You don't like the idea of sitting in a mech and pressing buttons? I really don't. Oh. Do you remember when we were at PAX and Jam and I were playing it? Were you uh, there for that? I do not think I was there for that. Jam hit the big red light that said eject while I was trying to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why did you do this, Jam? He said, because it was flashing. And I go, ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as good a reason as any. I wonder how Steel Battalion is going to end up, though, seeing as how the giant controller was its big appeal for the first Xbox One. You know, the uh, multiple oh, yeah. buttons that you could hit. And now with Kinect, you are robbing someone of that completely and putting them in a very awkward... Stand here and hold your hands out. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I don't yeah. know if it's sitting down. I would hope so. But Maybe they have to. You have to use the connect and play with four controllers at the same time. <laughs> Please adjust the analog stick on controller three to move your eyes. Like, oh, okay. All right. I don't know. It might be interesting. I just figure you know demos out. Take advantage of it if you can. You're you're one of the lucky guys with the connect. Yes, the lucky ones. Who oh, and did you ever go back to Skyrim to do those shouts when they did the uh, connect? I have not, but I Roll. think I might do that over the weekend. Okay, very cool. So you could be like, blow! Oh, you finally Suck. you finally have time to come back and play Skyrim now, huh? Because you uh, want to get back to it because it's the end of the semester, right? Yay! Didn't you, like, not beat it yet? I haven't beaten it yet. Oh, Yay. He's too busy cutting trees down. Cutting trees? Wait, that's Minecraft. Oh, yeah, you've been playing a lot of that too, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You don't right. you don't sound proud of that. Eh, You're it's like, a thing. Yeah, I, I I I finally found diamonds for the first time ever, and then died in lava, and all oh. my diamonds are gone. So <laughs> in a way, fuck that game. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> watching watching my Twitter blow up with pl- players that are playing it for the first time because it's on the 360. It's like a year and a half ago when they were playing on the PC. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very strange. Look I can't this, wait to get some updates, though. Um, some of the things that they're going to add in are things like experience and hunger and food and all sorts of other things. Right. So. I just saw a, I just saw a video that they're adding um, kind of an 8-bit computer into the game, programmable Ooh. Ooh. computer okay, who array. Who likes to program computers, anyway? This guy! <laughs> You're like, everyone, leave me alone, I'm programming. No, you so. don't like to program computers. Every day I, he- I see tweets about you hating programming. <laughs> I do hate programming. You're indifferent about it. I hate it so much. But if I did it inside a game, that would be super fun. It'd be better. Well, is that our show for the week? I think that's our show for the week. I want to thank all of you for listening. Um... Because you are beautiful people. And if you buy I Max Payne 3, you're beautiful. More than likely have sex with you. Uh, I want to thank uh, my co hosts. Wear glove. <laughs> Dr. Gumar. Yes, I would like to thank my mouth for saying the words properly and Sonny's ears for not hearing them properly. You can press X to have a heart attack. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Sunflower4000 for his lack of hearing. Buy Max Payne 3. Please get Max Payne 3. Play Max Payne 3. Great game! A plus would buy again. Brought to you by Rockstar Entertainment. <laughs> this portion of the Games Only bro- Podcast brought to you by Rockstar. Max like, Payne 3, please buy it! Buy Max Payne 3 or we'll fire everyone. <laughs> oh, like big... What, what was it? Uh, the Kingdoms of Avalar studio. They just fired everybody today, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, There's definitely. a reason for that. They needed to sell three million copies to break three, and they to break even, and they uh, sold 1.2 million. Game development costs are out of hand. Indeed. Yeah, that's still pretty good. They sold 1.2 million. That's not bad. That's not going to do them any good now. Uh, Kurt, Sch- <laughs> Kurt Schilling's got that baseball money. He's got that old man money. He's good. Yeah, he should be using it instead of well, whatever. Um, 
Not our problem. We're consumers. Not our problem. I'm, 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 I'm consumed. Uh, yes. Thank you all for listening, and we will talk at you next week. To live. Laters. Farts. Heart attack. Toots. <laughs>